Hi friends, Mrs. Harris here. Today we are going to do our Square One Art project. Our I Can statement is, I can use different Zentangle patterns to create my own unique composition. What is a Zentangle, you ask? Zen is the form of relaxation, and a tangle is a little drawing. Basically, it's doodling, and we all love to doodle. We're going to look at some patterns, and we're going to look at the simplicity of them, but yet they're complex. Oftentimes what happens when we're creating patterns, we tend to just do simple straight lines. Maybe we'll put them vertically, maybe we'll put them diagonally, but again, mix them up a little bit. Sometimes when we draw patterns and we make circles, we always color in the circle. What if we left the circle white and made the background black? The requirement for this project is you are going to have at least 10 different patterns or Zentangles. You will have to select your layout. Color is optional. That's going to be your choice whether you want to add it or you don't want to add it. I really don't want patterns to repeat, but if you feel you need to have them repeat for balance, then that's okay. Now let's look at how some patterns are created. Remember, this is just supposed to come freely from you. It's not a lot of thought. Just have fun with it. You can see how they take a simple squiggle line and add something in between it. This one's important to note, a checkerboard, and look how they've dressed it up. This reminds me of fish scales, and they've really changed it. They've added a line, but they didn't color it all in. Nicely done. I love this one. It kind of creates that optical illusion. And again, change it up. Notice the circles, and then the background is what's got the dark area. Now we're going to talk about layout ideas, and this is really important because you've got to have a plan. This one might look familiar from our indirect self-portrait of an eye. Again, you're going to figure out how you want to lay these out. You're just not going to attack your piece of paper. You want to make a plan. This one reminds me of a leaf. It's got the veins running through it. Notice how balanced these are. It's not just a line drawing. There's lots of blacks, there's lots of whites, and there's even some middle values, and we'll look at that in a minute. But each layout is so different. You need to have a plan, a vision, where you want to go. Ten different designs. If you're going to add color, think about where you're going to add color. You're also going to need to leave a place for your signature, and we're going to talk about that towards the end here. Hi, sixth grade, we're ready to start our square one art. First thing I want you to notice is the piece of paper. Somebody's gonna to have to come up to school and pick it up for you. We're gonna have them in the vestibule, but I want you to notice right here where it says top, that's where your design's gotta be. At the beginning of this, just on a scrap piece of paper, I want you to practice making patterns, coming up with different patterns. What I'm getting from my students at school is a lot of patterns that look like this. And we've all decided that that's the exact same pattern. The line has just been moved. My suggestion is to change it up a little bit because this is a project all based on patterns and you really need to change it up. You need to dress it up and make it feel different. This is not about creating black and white. This is about creating values by doing things like this. If you were creating black and white, you'd be coloring like this and that would give you black and white. So again, patterns, different patterns, make them feel and look different because it's gonna create a value and it's also gonna create the illusion of texture. So on your piece of paper, you're going to start once you've got your plan. You're gonna come up with a plan. And what I tell the kids is just kind of thumbnail sketch it out. Maybe you're gonna start with a heart here in the center and maybe you're gonna have some lines coming out. There's a series of different ideas and I'm gonna show those to you in the video. You've already seen them in the video, excuse me. You've already seen them. So you're gonna see different ways to start it. It could even be where you have like a road system or as I call it, the leaf and you start in like this. And then you're gonna do at least 15 plus patterns, but you're only gonna have at least eight in your drawing. The reason I ask for 15 is because I'm gonna get a lot of this and I really want you to change it up. And so some of the kids have just done leaf patterns. I'm gonna show you some of the finished work and they may make this all connected so it looks like it's all just one continuous kind of, I call it either roads or veins of a leaf. Okay, and then your patterns will go in these areas. Again, it's your choice. If you choose to do a huge shape, you've got to think about this negative space out here, the white space, what are you gonna do with it? You can't leave it white. You could put a pattern back there, 
maybe something running through it. I try to tell the kids to stay away from a ruler. The reason I say that is just because I think it looks better when it's freehand drawn. Otherwise, it becomes too stiff and too perfect, and nobody's perfect. So, um, But those are some ideas, and again, we've already seen some in the video. So you'll get your piece of paper, and then you will start. You're going to start with your pencil like you always do. I've started this one, and I've been working on it very slowly. And as you can see, mine doesn't have like a center or an off center or veins. Mine is coming out of the swirl. So I've just started to do patterns that are growing out of it. I'm not doing sections of patterns. And that's your choice. This is my choice. So you can see here, I originally had two lines. It kind of looked like this over here, very much looked like that over there. And then I decided to add these lines as I was black markering it because I wanted to make it so the kids could see it. Notice this pattern right here. This is thinking outside of the box. Traditionally, what we do is color our dots. We fill those in. But what I did here is I did the background. So again, I'm creating a nice dark contrast. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a bunch of lines like what I see in this section. I'm looking for some dark contrast. This one I'm finishing up. What I'm doing here is I'm adding kind of like a V shape, a curved V shape. And what essentially it's doing is it's turning my square into a circle for me. So when I fill that in, you'll see how it be forms into a circle shape. I'm making the line in between right here, this line a little bit, oopsie, thicker. Look, I just kind of messed it up. So all I'm gonna do there is change it, make it thicker. And that's what you do. If you make a boo-boo, make it a good boo-boo. Sometimes that happens. Don't think, oh my gosh, I've got to throw it away. Please do not use whiteout on this because the whiteout will look terrible. That's why you've got to have your plan ahead of time. Um, so when you're doing this, you know exactly what you want to do. Plan it out a lot before you get on the final paper. So again, you can see how I'm creating a darker area. This looks look like a white grid. I'm creating a little bit darker of a value over here. So again, you're going to fill this up with designs and patterns. And then you're going to, like up here, um, what I think I want to do is kind of change that pattern up where I've got my checkerboard. And instead of doing a traditional color in, I think I might do a directional color in where it kind of looks like this scribble. I don't want to do it in um, black marker because it will go all the way through. But I think I'm going to do that kind of a scribble in a direction. I have to be careful because all of a sudden I don't want to do one this way and then have the rest all going that way. So pay close attention. All right, so this is going to be your last time doing square one art. And this is all about choices. You're choosing the layout. I'm just asking for it to be done in patterns. Here's one student's artwork. Uh, she chose just to leave it black and white. You can see how she signed her name nice and neatly there. And we've erased everything. Everything looks nice and clean. Here is a, another student's artwork. This one was really kind of tough. This one I had to pull teeth with because this was very empty. She ended up adding color, making some of these black and white and black and white over here. And then she added this curved line, kind of makes it look like a cobweb. And I love how she added this dash. It was very empty feeling before she did that. Here's Now notice the way that she chose to do her sun. She went side to side. She's overlapping her colored pencil. You are gonna have the choice. Colored pencil, you can do marker, you can do crayon, you can do color stick, uh, anything you have at home. If you have watercolors at home, that's fine. I don't have oil pastels and watercolors I can give everybody, so whatever you have at home will work. Here's another one. You can see they were trying to do more of the tie-dye effect. Everything is nicely filled. There's not a lot of open white space. This one's really fun. This one's so different. This one he's got going with the crayons, which is fine. It works great. I love the buildings. I love how this all goes together. Looks great. I think, no, I didn't show you this one. This one, these two patterns were so similar that I kept saying to her, honey, you've got to change it up. You've got to do something different. So she did a checkerboard here, which is pretty typical. And then she came over here and she's like, hmm, added this little flower. And then I love the way she did the lines and then she changed the directions of them. Nice thinking. Here's two fun areas. She chose to color in the background. Creates a completely different feel. So again, it doesn't have to be black and white. You can add color if you want to. The choice is yours. Or you can leave it black and white or add color, your choice. Don't forget, we don't wanna end up with just a simple line drawing. In the bottom left-hand corner here, you can see how they're starting to fill in with some dark. 
Here's another example. They're filling in. They're creating more value. There's multiple ways to create value. You can create lines, curved lines, dots, squiggly lines. I really like the effect on this page. They've used the letters, alphabets, to kind of create a little bit different value. Okay, the last thing you're gonna look at is your signature. And your signature needs to be done in a black Sharpie. Fine tip would be perfect. Um, don't let it end up like an inch from each edge because what happens is they crop the image. So like I might put my name right fun in here. I could put it up in here. I just wanna see your first name and the year 2020. I want you to notice I'm still working on this. I've moved along quite a bit, but notice over here, this is looking like an empty plain line drawing. I've dressed this up a little bit by adding some of those values. This line right here creates value. Um, I showed you some different ways to do it with the cross hatching, for example, that alphabet idea. I've had students use numbers and things like that, but again, dress it up a little bit. Hi kids, don't forget when you're done with the square one art, have your moms or dads, grandmas and grandpas, aunts and uncles, whoever we live with, bring it on up back to school so I can mail it in. Do your personal best work and you guys know it goes pencil, Sharpie, color. Have a great time.